work that I do, the reason I get out of bed, the vision I have, the mission and the purpose is all because of my recovery. My 20th year in recovery, I ended up in a, a mental hospital because I didn't want to be here anymore. I was without purpose. I was in recovery, but I hadn't treated the real symptom to the problem. The drugs weren't the problem. They were the solution to a very long, old problem. So hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to see you all today. Um, we're here doing something a little bit different than we've done in the past. We're going to do a little bit of show and tell, and we're going to talk about some great organizations that are uh, helping parents and children uh, deal with uh, drug abuse and drug paraphernalia that you might not even recognize that drug paraphernalia. Uh, and uh, on my right is Tressa. And you should all know Tressa. She's famous in this uh, part of the community. Um, she runs an, uh, a uh, To Die For fabulous organization. So Tressa, uh, you'll be introducing Anna and mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit more. Uh, the floor is yours, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's great to be on today. Um, Tressa here from AHM Youth and Family Services. We're always so honored to, to have the opportunity to reach folks and hopefully educate and give you information about what's going on in our communities. Um, and I'm just so grateful to have Anna Gopian here today. She is founder and creator of TriCircle Inc. as well as TriCircle Restoration. We had Anna at Hebron Day, which just happened a couple of weeks ago. It was mm -hmm. a beautiful day um, up at Burnt Hill Park. Um, we had an AHM booth, and then we had Anna come with us. And what our intent was is to bring information to the public around substance abuse. And so I'm just really excited to have Anna here because we had a, a great turnout at Hebron Day. We had a lot of people stop by her booth and ask questions and I think was really impacted um, about what Anna is gonna present today. So we wanted to bring this information to a larger scale. So Anna, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> um, if first you can just start off, Anna, by telling us a little bit about your organization and how you got started. Thank you, thank you. And it's great to be here. I appreciate the time and the opportunity to share to a broader audience. And even like the kickoff day, the summer kickoff in Hebron was fantastic. And the interaction was, you know, concerning. I feel like I need to apologize a lot of the time when I'm showing what is right in front of people and they might not be aware of. So TriCircle is a nonprofit organization. TriCircle Restoration is not, but its intent was to be supportive of each other. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things that get brought up or stimulate conversation or concern. TriCircle would be the place that you're able to go. Um, there's uh, hope and support groups, hope after loss groups, which are free to the public and across the state via um, the Zoom and internet platforms. Mm -hmm. um, we have education, TriCircle tri Restoration has educational opportunities. The board to my left is something that is just a visible reference that really expands to other, you know, I can refer to some of the products that are, are on the table we can show later. Mm -hmm. And then there's some glass top boxes. A lot of the concerns, it's very, um, large, what it is that's being exposed, and overwhelming. So it needs to really be done in increments. So Tricycle Restoration is the LLC, and that has um, not just the board, not just over 300 items that we can touch and better explain and expand on, but there's five glass top boxes. And in those boxes, there's actually um, live residual of active um, substance use. So if it's an organization in a, a town or towns, in your case, that come together to really touch some of the tough conversations, mm -hmm. it's, it's really hard to talk about this, right? And maybe um, bring a heightened level of concern. The nonprofit organization that I spoke about, it really is another place that we can have a safe set of community. And everybody knows someone. And you don't have to do it alone. And you can open up conversation the hope after loss groups are for folks that have lost a loved one due to a substance use disorder. So I'm going to turn it back over so I make sure that yeah. I stay on point to what you'd like from me because <laughs> talking is no longer my problem. Yeah. So I thank no. you very much so far. No, this is great. And, and like you said, I, I think what was so impactful about coming to Hebron Day is sometimes 
we think that this doesn't happen in our towns. Mm -hmm. You know, we have this idea that drug abuse only happens in the big cities. Mm -hmm. And I think you coming to that day really made people realize, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, this is happening. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll go into some of the items that you found mm -hmm. when you were doing your walks around our area. But I first want to touch upon some of these items yep. that you brought today. Mm -hmm. Because again, I think, you know, when you're in the mindset that this doesn't happen in my town, you may not see things that are right mm -hmm. in your plain sight. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, if you could share some of these items, and obviously they look like every day, mm -hmm. items that we would see in someone's car, on mm -hmm. someone's desk, but can you kind of walk us through what these, sure. these actually are? I'll give guidance. Kathy, you can have at it on that one. The top of that unscrews, actually, if you were to take it and unscrew it, and then it leaves opportunity to conceal an item. Paraphernalia to the Tricircle Restoration Project is anything used to produce, consume, or conceal. Mm -hmm. So these are just, um, what did I have there? Six different items that are utilized to um, conceal uh, substances. So it opens on the bottom. Oh, maybe extra amount of cash than should be on hand, and there's different things that they can be utilized. But it can also be in a knapsack, and you might not be aware at all. It can be on a desk in a bedroom. It, I don't think it would be in a refrigerator, but it could be <laughs> if you're trying to hide a volume of cash. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. But this one, let me help you out. And having liquid on both ends is also deceiving, right? It doesn't lead you more apt to think it's real mm. and not a concern. So it was to open up. Yeah. All of these have some way of opening. That yeah, one. This one's hairspray mm -hmm. in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And the more expensive these products are, the better they are. You did this one already. Yep. Yeah. And, that, and that being a car product, it's something that you would probably more than likely have in your, in your car yeah. for transportation. Mm -hmm. um, some of the most recent things, um, the Aquafina water, and I don't want to disrespect any of the name brands, but this is how they're produced. Mm -hmm. You too, unfortunately, can just go online and purchase this. A lot of the items, not all that are here now, but will be in picture to refer to later, there's like uh, tampons in each one of the tubes inside the tampons. Most people wouldn't maybe choose to, you know, look at that any mm -hmm. further other than pass it by. So um, those you're able to put other substances in and um, they come to your home in a yellow envelope and the ones that I last got were from a sports company. That was the name leading us to believe that it was a sports company delivering something. So you had, um said that you did walks around town. So would these items be in, uh, say, this part of the state? Would they be at a convenience store? Would they be uh, at a tobacco shop, perhaps? Mm -hmm. uh, where, would we, where would people find these besides online? Um, well, I can research and get back to Teresa, where exactly maybe in these towns yep. that you guys are affiliated with. I didn't buy these in your town. Mm -hmm. The walks were actually done in your town. Um, or one of your towns. Yep. <laughs> and I guess it was concerning because when someone drives by a, a nipper bottle, a small bottle, they say, oh, there's one of those bottles. But when you see um, the project in its um, collected form, so what was available for folks at the Hebron uh, summer kickoff was eight separate walks, eight separate addresses, the distance of travel, the time of day. So I do have those items, and it was concerning because of the volume of things most people would not see driving or walking by. I have a set of eyes that now cannot see some of this stuff. And that would include um, parts of a syringe, different kinds of heroin wrappers that be ripped and or used. And unfortunately, in one of them, it looks like someone might have thrown something in mm -hmm. volume out the window if someone was either following them or they were concerned so but the alcohol the different kinds of not just the nippers but I also want to stress the fact especially because of the prevention work that's done in the higher levels of challenges that are being need to be met mm -hmm. um, I know there's maybe additional money but additional concerns right so it's needed the vaping products the high level of vaping products and other things that are used to um, roll produce or conceal consume mm -hmm. um, it could be either marijuana in all of its forms, dab, wax, shatter, mm -hmm. marijuana itself, K2, kratom, all, all this different stuff. I don't know or have I necessarily used all of these. What I did not share with you folks in the beginning is that this month, actually, on July 13th, I will be celebrating 27 years of my own recovery. That's and good. it was it gave me an understanding when I was hired back in 2013 to start hoping support groups for the town of Wallingford that the families just didn't know. 
and the disease of addiction utilizes the shame, guilt, and isolation to keep people away from the solutions in the community necessary to get on the other side of this. So I think it's super important that everybody knows someone and it's okay not to be okay, but what you don't, I don't wanna tell you what to do, but mm -hmm. what you'd rather do, I say the better way of <laughs> maybe getting to the disease of addiction, and I'm always that girl that says the stuff that nobody wants to say, so that's okay, mm -hmm. is if you live well, if you take those risks, you become part of the greater solution versus part of the problem where the disease thrives. So I, I'm one of those people that will definitely push the envelope mm -hmm. and uh, I don't have anything really attached to me other than these organizations that pushes it too right. because we wanna create solutions and we believe that together we're stronger, definitely. For sure. Now these items that you showed us, mm -hmm. Do you have to be 18 to get these online? Like, are these accessible to our, our youth and our students if they wanted to? I think so. I think yeah. that it would be the way in paying that would maybe be an obstacle for someone, but mm -hmm. someone can just get an older brother or sister. I'm not sure. And because you can give it direction, there's even some substances are still very much so available online. And one of the highest level of concerns right now are the counterfeit pills. I mean, everybody's like, my friend wouldn't do that, right? Or I know who they are, or they know their dealer, or they, mm -hmm. and the thing is, it's not what it appears to be. And it takes so little bit of fentanyl to be just wiping out a generation of people with all of the best intent, meaning it could be one use and just some curiosity or something like that, but that's all it takes is one time and just losing yeah. people. I mean, the quilts and the posters and the things that we offer to bring community together and talk about the loved ones that have passed, I know it's super important. I'd rather the volume of people be coming to hope and support and helping them to provide resources to them and not be on our quilt, mm -hmm. you know? But if they have passed, we cannot forget that there are families left behind and they may have additional challenges within their families but the quilt is another way that we're able to honor those people mm. so they're not gone in That's vain beautiful. and so that they are able to be talked about in part of the purpose because advocating is almost like a survival component of um, living in life with the loss of a loved one, mm -hmm. you know? Tressa, your um, organization mm -hmm. does a lot of work with substance abuse. They do a lot of work with mental health and a lot mm -hmm. of work with other, do, do you see, uh, people in the communities that AHM represents, the Andover, Hebron, Marlboro, and Columbia, mm -hmm. do you see substance abuse in those communities? We do, we do. We, we absolutely have folks in the community that, that seek AHM out for support. Mm -hmm. um, we do run smart recovery groups, mm -hmm. which even through COVID, we've been able to still hold them on a virtual platform which has been helpful and, and I feel like we've even had more people feel comfortable reaching out through mm -hmm. the virtual platforms because they don't have to turn their camera on they don't have to tell us who they are so we're, we're feeling encouraged that people feel comfortable mm -hmm. attending those groups so we offer a group for um, young adults so ages 18 to 26 then we offer a support group for friends and family and then we also offer a support group at Ram High School for students that might be um, struggling with substance abuse and recovery, and those are held during alternating lunch periods. Wow. So those students can attend, um, you know, parents can refer, students can self-refer, perhaps a guidance counselor. Um, so, so we are finding that people are reaching out to us, but mm -hmm. I think a lot of it comes down to education and knowing these signs and symptoms early so mm -hmm. you can help someone hopefully before it has you know, gone to, to a tragic situation. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why I'm so grateful that we have you, Anna, to kind of educate us about what to look mm -hmm. for, whether it's in someone's car, in someone's bedroom, mm -hmm. in a family member's home. Because I think sometimes you might, and it was interesting when we were at Hebron Day, we definitely had folks come up to us that something within their gut was telling them they may have a friend or family member with a mm -hmm. struggle with addiction. And then once you start bringing out some of this stuff, they're like, oh my goodness, I've seen mm -hmm. that. Or, oh, this is all making sense. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, in just witnessing, you, you did a wonderful job in talking to people, but in that moment, I could sense that they knew mm -hmm. what they thought was true. Mm -hmm. And so then the next step is, how can we support them? How mm -hmm. can we support them as a, as a family member, as well as the person struggling? 
Um, so what else? I see that you have a belt here on the table. I do. And there's over 300 different things that you can um, touch or mm. see under glass. The belt, and, and why I think it's important, because it's such an everyday kind of thing, but why I brought the belt is because it was left in this form, in this, in, in this presence, right? It was already a lasso. This would be something you would do as you're putting the belt on. So if you're finding it in this way, it might have been utilized as a tourniquet. So mm. it would have been just slipped on, utilized, and then slipped off and left. And also the fact that there was um, teeth marks and saliva left on it too, that would have um, just ex you know clarified the circumstance. Sure. So that was one of them. Um, I want to just expand, if I could, um, on the fact that the people that I was given, what I say, the honor and privilege to talk to, and the ones that were um, felt safe enough to expand themselves in conversation, mm -hmm. and um, I know everyone knows someone, and I also know how hard it is to talk about, but the amount of people that confirmed an, an engagement and um, a personal relationship with someone loving passing, staying, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And what I really wanna make sure that people understand is that substance sometimes isn't the problem, but the solution to an older problem. And the thing is, is that we need time and language. We need to be able to talk about it. And that is so true in education, you mm -hmm. know? And it, it's not an easy topic. So how do you allow someone to, um, you know, open the dialogue and feel safe? You know, language matters. Yeah, for sure. First person talking about folks that way, you know? Yeah. But the other products and the things over the counter is super important. There's actually a business of urine, you know, so there's different ways that if someone is utilizing an MAT program, right? A medicated assisted therapy, that's great. And it, and it works for many people. There's another side to that too. It could be a marketable item and we wanna make sure that people have everything that they need in place to succeed. So when we look at those things, and I'll take it back to the support groups, um, we have the 12 panel drug tests because sometimes we're learning how to have dialogue. We're learning how to regain trust. We're learning how to um, support someone on their forward journey and if they're on an MAT program, they should be testing positive for it. So that isn't a bad thing because you'll be catching someone doing something right. And that's how you want to be able to support someone going forward, right, and encourage them. It's also a great way to get out of a conversation. So if, dude, my mom's got a drug test or my dad said, when I get home, we're going to have to take one of those tests. You saw it on the counter. Then they might be able to utilize that to get out of a sticky situation that they might be in. You know, mm -hmm. it's not easy to be a kid. I can't imagine with the access that's out there um, and how it is that you can navigate the choices that are out there and the mental health concerns and crises. Yeah. yeah, I think that's something we've definitely seen. And I know Kathy and I, we've talked a lot about mental health. Mm -hmm especially during COVID mm -hmm. um, and just the rise of mental health challenges that so many people in our four towns are having. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, it's, I'm just so appreciative of those that we have that are advocating and, and ready mm -hmm. to jump in and help. So. so Anna talked a little bit about um, uh, drug use as a result of a prior mm -hmm. incident and um, in your uh, care of people, do you find that a lot of people have trauma that they've not dealt with that has led them to mm. this issue? We do. I mean, you know, at AHM, we uh, primarily work with youth on um, age zero through 26, but, but through therapy, you know, we, we do engage families and, and we do see that there's, you know, a lot of times a cycle, right? That if, if a child is struggling, then some of that might be trauma that they've experienced within the home. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes is due to trauma that parents, you know, have experienced. So we, we are seeing that mm -hmm. probably more so than everyone thinks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our numbers as far as our clinical department goes over the past three years has, you know, quadrupled. It, mm -hmm. is, it is surreal at times to see, you know, how many folks we have coming to AHM for, for clinical support, which we are, we are honored and we want to keep mm -hmm. adding to our <laughs> mm -hmm. staff, which, you know, Kathy has, has, you know, secured us funding so we can continue to add therapists. And we've got, you know, our counselors that work for AHM at all of our schools, which is helping, mm. but absolutely, you know, there, there are folks in our community that have suffered a great deal of trauma. And sadly to, to deal with that, we have people that are turning to substances. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. And you talked about past experiences. Would you find that most people have had a 
trauma situation mm -hmm. in some manner or another that led this to the, they might have had a physical trauma mm -hmm. if they uh, were taking pain medication and that might have extended into other things. What would mm -hmm. you say? Is that something that you've noticed with people? I do. And in my own self personally, in many of the close people that I've had, the uh, honor to, you know, meet in the process, right. trauma seems to be one of the highest level and percentage of um, folks having to use it totally coincides. Mm -hmm. and, and with ACEs being more discussed and utilized in the, some of the uh, surveys that they're doing in the school systems and things that you're hearing and seeing, and it's starting to come together and people are really like starting to get shook up a little and like opening their eyes to mm -hmm. that. So yeah, the story before the story is what I always say. It's, you have to be, even when treatment, right. the breakdown and you know, you can go somewhere for detox, you can go somewhere to treatment, maybe 30, 60, 90 days if you're lucky, but that's scratching, that's, that's providing you a reprieve. In detox isn't treatment for one, it's the beginning stages in leading you towards the choice that you may make for treatment. So again, to get somewhere long enough so you can discuss the concerns and have other places, the continuity of care, that is the long-term goal for TriCircle as an organization too, is to really create a 15 month opportunity for people to get to that story before the story and all of the components. So it's not just about substances. Are you uh, safe at home? Do you have food? Do you have shelter? Is there transportation? Do you have clothes? There's a lot of different components. It's not about just putting down a substance. There's mm -hmm. so much more to it. So, And it's systemic, right? So you talked about systems and cycles, right? Okay. That's what we look at as well. Everybody is involved and your shifts and family change. Addiction not necessarily be about a substance. It could be a behavior. The behavior can turn into a substance or the substance putting that down, the brain still needs to be satiated. A behavior may trans, you know, like a whack-a-mole, mm. right? You can put one thing down and three more pop up. So there's a concern in that. And uh, if people don't know that potential is there, they wouldn't have their eyes and ears and support system and knowledge and resources prepared for that. So. For sure. Well, I definitely want to get to some of the uh, content that you found mm -hmm. when um, you went on these walks. Mm -hmm. um, but before we take a quick break and, mm -hmm. and get prepped for that, is there anything else that you wanted to share? I see that you have a, a shirt there. I do. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. It's been keeping me quite comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um, the shirt I brought, it's just one of the things that I'm able to open a conversation with and no particular kind of shirt, just mm. so I can clarify that if there's something on here that it's not like a marketing play or something. So the shirt, and when I talk about clothes and your kids and, and your loved ones, right? So if you're um, in the laundry and you happen to see something around the collar and you could feel it, it may be hard or sticky or there may be an odor. That may be a sign, a red flag. Uh, further conversation also happens at points in time that it happens on the, the sleeves in the edges because actually something could be huffed in school if it was saturated prior and it would come into the laundry sooner or later and you might be able to take that into consideration. So laundry, again, is always one of those things. And if you're hugging your kid and you take a sniff, they might smell in a way that would heighten the level of concern and you might wanna say, why do you smell like this or that, right? Mm -hmm. I brought this and this is a little bit exaggerated in regards to what you're seeing. It has the colors on that. Why I did this, it was, uh, you know, with support of someone that had the experience shared with me when some of the pills have time releases on them, folks will put them in their mouth and suck the time release off it and then wipe it on their collar. So it could be at the bottom of your shirt, it could be on your sleeve. What they're doing is trying to remove the time release so the medication is more immediately and ready, uh, um, readily available. So that's why I did it. So I, it's not any necessary particular medication, but medications with time releases, you can remove it. I mean, it's mm. there as a safety precaution, Correct. but we can get past it. So the shirt I use to open conversation in, and some of the things that I had brought um, with me today, um, like a pocketbook with like dozens of different things that you might not even take into consideration. So we'll be able to um, expand on that or, or leave behind so you have that to share with folks. Mm. Um, when you're looking at just everyday things, you just might not know, you just might not know. Inside of a hat, you know, there's like a, la uh, a lip inside the hat. Mm -hmm. There's different ways to transport things too. The heels of a shoe, if you lift the heel, back heel of a shoe, you're able to put things in and walk it right into school. Cut a Tootsie Roll in half, stuff a pill in it, stick it back together, wrap it up, and walk it into school. 
carry it into a concert, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's the most amazing minds that are utilizing their talents and skills in just a, an unguided, misdirected way, right? Yeah. So I think it's pretty yeah. awesome that we're able to expose it and maybe bring light to the fact that it is. There's so many amazing people with so much to offer and right. it just might be misguided. Right, kind of sidetracked, good. All right, well then I think we'll take a quick break mm -hmm. and we'll get some of those boxes that mm -hmm. you um, collected. Yep. We'll be right back. Thank you. Okay. Last year there was a detective that did tell my mom I probably wouldn't be found alive. I ruined friendships, I ruined um, relationships with my loved ones, my family. I couldn't hold a job. Um, I have overdosed, I've almost died so many times and I'd say the past 10 years, it's been a roller coaster. It's been up and down. I couldn't stay sober for more than like three months. The message I want to give people about TriCircle Incorporated is that we provide the tools to build strong futures. We're in the very beginning stage. We can say it's infancy. It's only two and a half years. We've, we're at breakneck speed when it comes to establishing our intentions, a three-phase plan. But the message I want to give is that there's hope that the people that we're losing and the people that I'm meeting and the people that need help, that there's other ways and means and multiple pathways to, you know, provide the resources. Anna has been a support um, since I connected with her recently, actually. Her mission is to help others and she's just so loving and um, I'm really blessed and proud that I'm a part of her life because she's helping me a lot. It's, it's okay to hurt and it's okay to ask for help. And so we're back from a little break. Uh, a pleasure to see you all. We're just going to go through um, some items that Anna found on a casual walk through a local community. Tressa? Yeah, so we had Anna do eight walks within the four towns. And so she has a lot to share, but we chose one box. And I believe on the front here, it says this is um, Marlboro at the exit 12 off ramp um, at the commuter lot. OK, so that was where um, this particular box of paraphernalia was found. Mm -hmm. So, Anna, if you could walk us through some of the items that you discovered. Sure. And, and it was further, not just the commuter lot. I did 4.5 tenths of a mile down what I think is North Main Street, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly, and back. So this is an, a compilation of uh, 0.9 miles. And then I was able to um, bring to you, this is what is concerning, right? So mm -hmm. uh, high level of alcohol. And when I look at that, I look at the nipper bottles, the half pints, the cans, you know, the different kinds of things. It doesn't matter what it is. What I pick up is anything that is um, associated to a substance use disorder, in my best understanding, um, and that's a pretty broad spectrum, Disclu discluding uh, scratch-off tickets, food wrappers, and cigarette butts. So I feel like the <laughs> yeah. need to tell you that I know there's a lot of garbage. It's very hard when I'm trying to pick all this stuff up and mm. leaving something behind, but this is to make the point that I'm trying to make. I think the biggest concern, and I have still shots that we'll be able to integrate for folks, um, is the high level of heroin wrappers that I was able to find. Another um, strong and um, very active finding is the different vaping products. So in wrappers, things that might be utilized. So this is like um, what we call a blunt wrapper. Uh, there's also rolling paper, empty boxes of rolling paper, um, vaping products, vaping products themselves, parts and pieces thrown out the window regularly. It's um, considered trash, right? Or items that have had um, substances in them or uh, parts and pieces of vaping containers. There's uh, such a large variety of different kinds of vaping things in the containers in which you can find them in. Buprenorphine, one of the medicated assistant therapies. These are two different kinds of um, the wrappings to what can, you know, it's a combination of buprenorphine and naloxone. This one is just more of a brand name Suboxone, and uh, this is just another way of providing the same medication. It could be utilized to help someone in their program, but it, I found it outside the window, uh, not outside my window, outside on the ground, mm -hmm. on the side of the road, and it could be also a marketable item being used for um, similar reasons, meaning not being sick, or um, mm -hmm. it could be the substance abuse. So I wanna go back, I think, to what you have in your hand right now for mm -hmm. those people that 
you know, don't know what a heroin paper looks mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. We maybe show that to the camera just so they can sure. really this look at that. Sure. This is a full paper. Um, mm -hmm. This is a full bag. One bag is a bag, and 10 bags is what is called a bundle. A lot of the time, uh, a bundle wrapped would have a small black elastic around mm -hmm. it. So that I did not find. That would probably be harder to find. But some of these wrappers, which I was showing you earlier, actually have different stamps on them. The stamp is actually a way that someone might be able to find a particular, um, what would be considered good or um, a very potent kind of, it could be heroin. It's probably harder to find heroin now than it is to find, uh, uh, or fentanyl is hard, you know, it's in everything. So a lot of the time you think you're getting something. So this is just one of the wrappers that um, has a marking on it. And I can find, and I have um, a bag full of different kinds of uh, paraphernalia. Um, I don't know that I'm doing justice to showing what's in here. There's so many different kinds of wrappers. And these are full. Usually you find half of them. You don't find a whole one. I don't know what you can see on your side. I know you have your mm -hmm. gloves. Yeah. Here's a blue. This looks Something like this. It's another half a bag that's been torn. Yep. That's, a I guess, a vaping product because I mm -hmm. don't vape. But I know there's so many different kinds of things. And if we were to dig down, because there's a syringe in here, um, the other, I'm going to back this up a little so mm -hmm. I can get a hand on it. There was, uh, this is a plunger cover of a syringe. Here's a syringe. You see that? There's the syringe minus the needle. So I never did find the needle. And the cap of the syringe is in here too. What's added, there's a certain colors of things that I can't not see now, right? So there's the blue of a, a jewel. A cartridge, there's a certain blue color. A syringe cover is usually an orange color. The Suboxone and Buprenorphine wrappers are blue and white and yellow. So there's certain things that I can see from a distance. But mm. yeah, the, and when you, usually when you find a heroin wrapper, you usually find more than one piece of it in multiple bags, mm. you know. So, but a lot of times, you know, squished things. This person uh, had obviously more than one bag because there's multiple pieces of this particular things so I'm not sure mm -hmm. what else you'd like me to discuss it's concerning that's all yeah. I mean that's a high level of concern well, that's just on one walk right one nine tenths of a mile so yep uh, in in an area that uh, doesn't have um, uh, what people would think a high usage mm -hmm. of, of anything although I think I think alcohol is one of the worst drugs that we mm -hmm. have that we have out there I do think that alcohol and the nips are two things that mm -hmm. um, you know both of them alcohol but uh, I think that th those are everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're just everywhere. And Kathy, if I'm finding them on the side of the road, they're being consumed while driving. Correct. Right? So let me just like really kind of bring that home, right? Mm -hmm. So someone is drinking and driving, and if it's one, it's, I, I don't, it's just hard sometimes for me to process that right. mm -hmm. alone, let alone it's garbage. They're all nickels. By the time I'm done walking all 169 towns in our state, I, I maybe go on vacation with the amount of things that I have collected mm -hmm. and hopefully <laughs> really bring together a point. Maybe I'll bring them to the floor, legislative floor one day in a very large tarp. So we, uh, <laughs> yeah. so we actually put in a piece of legislation on, on NIPs that mm -hmm. every town uh, would get a nickel for every NIP that was sold within the borders of that town. Mm -hmm. And the uh, package stores report mm -hmm. what they're selling and that uh, the that revenue that is taken in mm -hmm. by towns is supposed to be used for an environmental project mm -hmm. to do cleanups, to do walks and pick things up, to uh, put rain gardens in, to uh, one of my communities that I represent is using them to um, uh, to hire an environmental officer. Mm -hmm. uh, they're one of the larger ones. But one of the smaller communities, less than 3,000 people, in that community uh, sold in a six month time frame because the money comes out mm -hmm. every six months, 74,000 nips. That's a lot 74, of nips. nips. Wow. Now, they do live on a road that uh, uh, people travel through. Yeah, through away, yep. So, uh, but that's one small town, mm -hmm. less than 3,000 people. Uh, they brought in. Uh, uh, at a nickel each, about close to four thousand mm -hmm. dollars in a six-month time frame, and that 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 to me is always something that that you have to remember. That's a that's a lot of mm -hmm. 
uh, a, a lot of mm -hmm. nips. Mm -hmm. I even find them when I go to church, they're in the parking lot too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that that's, I always think that that's kind of. I know, of, yeah. it's concerning. And I'd love to be able to provide this information for, you know, those towns. It just makes a point collectively, right? right. It's one thing to see a nip, but to see it collectively. Right. And, and I think that's what was most impactful when you were able to um, involve us with the mm -hmm. Hebron Summer Kickoff. I think seeing it, and I had the list of the streets that we were on, the eight different right. streets. I think that really, because some people came up and said, I didn't know that was happening in my town. Right. Right. Or in, so many people had said, oh, I live right down the street from well, That there. is my street. Yep. Yeah. I mean, right. that, it was, it was that's really, profound, yeah, sure. and there's two sides of things. So people, I really, you know, I don't want to say, it's naive. It's just like being naive to a lot of it, right? right? And they're like, not my town. I said, it's in every town. Right. I understand your desire not to have it in your town or not to have it in your family. I get that. But there's two sides, supply and demand. Mm. Right. And I always tell people, pick a side because it's usually one or the other. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, it might not be everybody, but it is definitely in most towns. It's a coping mechanism. And again, it's a, it's a survival skill utilized to get through something or to... Um, right. It has to do with trauma. Yeah, often. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, often has to do with trauma. Mm -hmm. so, so now we've seen two different things. We've seen what's on our roadsides mm -hmm. in uh, every community. And we've seen uh, paraphernalia that's sold in either online or mm -hmm. at uh, package stores or convenience stores or tobacco shops mm -hmm. that can hide other paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are two mm -hmm. issues that uh, were at Hebron Day and people were really, uh, I don't know if impressed was uh, right. the right word, maybe <laughs> yeah. horrified yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. and uh, saying we really didn't think that this was going on. Mm -hmm. So right. um, and this is something that people should just be aware of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it's awareness but it's also knowing what your supports are, mm -hmm. right? Knowing your supports in your town. So if you do have a friend or a family member mm -hmm. or a child that you suspect is abusing substances, you hopefully by watching this mm -hmm. and by seeing us at Hebron Day, you know that there are people here to help you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we may not be able to solve the entire issue, but <laughs> our hope is that by educating people yeah. And by connecting them with professionals and resources, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully our state will continue to support us financially so we can we can offer those supports. Mm -hmm. You know, we will be able to hopefully make a difference and get people to help and, you know, save save them mm -hmm. before it's it's too late. Mm -hmm. So that would be my hope. And so thank you so much, Anna, because I think this is amazing and that you have the expertise to be able to go out and, and bring mm -hmm. this to the public eye. It's just, it's so, so amazing and so mm -hmm. important. I am uh, really happy to have had the opportunity to be here to continue working along a side uh, AHM to meet Kathy and also to bring awareness to the community. Uh, Tri Circle, the nonprofit organization, has a list of amazing events that you too can come to. Make yourself available, get involved and volunteer. And the office number is two, let me see, 860-349-7074. Tricircle Restoration, the founder and creator um, of the Paraphernalia Project, uh, is available on our website, on Facebook, both of them on Facebook. I think it's Twitter, Instagram. It's not my thing, but we're definitely <laughs> available. And there's a lot of different ways to connect to me, probably in this circumstance, right to Teresa or to Kathy. Um, they'll know how to get in touch with me and uh, look forward to continuing to help the communities across Connecticut and provide resources and awareness regarding substance use disorders. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. As always, it's an honor to be able to connect with those in our community. If at any time you need to reach out to AHM, you can do so by calling 860-228-9488. You can also visit our website at ahmyouth.org, and you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. So we're wrapping up for today, but we don't want you to be left with thinking that this is not going to come back, uh, come back up again. Uh, we do have uh, uh, any idea that you would like to see us um, uh, bring forward to you, please call my office. You know my office number is 860-240-0579. If you have an idea on a show that you would like us uh, to bring forward to you, please let us know. Again, my office number is 860-240-0579. Thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you found this information valuable.
But there's a many, many reasons. There's a lot of history to tricircle. And helping individuals and families that are affected by substance use disorders, it's our mission, like through education, through community engagement, providing resources, connectivity, the community that we serve. I believe that the stigma and isolation are just as detrimental as the disease itself.